Hey Nathan, I am really grumpy, and that's because we're reviewing this, the brand new Toyota BZ4X. What the hell does that stand for anyway? Uh, well, it's uh, a battery zippy built for, uh, built zippy for Generation X. No, no, I, I, I think it stands for beyond zero. X means it's a crossover and four is, it's a, no, X means it's all wheel drive and four means it's like the RAV4 or something. You know what? I don't care. It's just a really silly name. Wouldn't it is atrocious. I, the, the name is no good. So, so that's not the only reason I'm grumpy. The other reason I'm grumpy is this BZ4X is basically a Solterra. I mean, just slap a Subaru badge on it and you got yourself a Solterra. Well, they they look a little different on the outside, a little different on the inside. Well, what do you think of the styling? I actually don't mind it. I don't think it's a bad looking vehicle. Um, now we recently drove the Lexus cousin of this vehicle and I also thought that was relatively attractive. My issue has to do with a lot of what's going on underneath, which we're gonna cover in a little bit, but there's something else. I had a great idea. What's that? I'm gonna call it the Toy Sola. Okay. <laughs> because there was a Solera once, right? Yeah. And a toy, right? Toy Sola. Yes, you're welcome, Toyota. Send the check to me because apparently we get paid by them. All right, let's 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 talk about the things that make an electric car unique, right? Mm -hmm. First and foremost, and Tesla pioneered this is it has to have a frunk. So let's see how big of a frunk uh, this uh, BZ4X has. Folks, prepare to be disappointed. Yes, yes, or grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Voila! There's your frunk. They're spaced by the uh, orange cables, which I hear are, are totally safe to grab. <laughs> yes, there is no front. There's a little space right here. And you know, that just speaks to the engineering, right? You could package this in such a way that it would have a front. To me, I'll give you the bottom line. I'm going to cut to the chase, yeah. right? I think Toyota built an electric car for people who hate electric cars. It's an interesting perspective. And I'm going to say this, that... The design on this one, if you look back at the first generation Nissan Leaf, which goes way back, there's actually a lot that that has in common with this, including having a lot of that electric motor under the hood. Now, this one does have the two electric motors, right? Uh, yes, this okay. is the all-wheel drive, uh, which also makes me grumpy. You know why that is, Nathan? Uh, because the all-wheel drive actually charges slower than the front-wheel drive. You're so kidding. if you get the dual motor set up, right? Yeah, like this one has. You're only going to be able to charge at a maximum rate of 100 kilowatts. Mm. Whereas if you get the two-wheel drive, uh -huh. you can charge at 150 kilowatts. Why? I don't know. Yeah. I, well, I, I don't know. Where's Tommy when we need him? And, and you know what? This is actually more expensive than the two-wheel drive. So the two-wheel drive starts around 42-ish. Yeah. This limited model, it's about 50, you know, when you take in all the destination fees, give or take. Right. Well, here, here's the thing about that. This has a much shorter range than the two-wheel drive, right? Yes. So this one, officially, get this, 222 miles, uh, but probably not in real terms. Yeah, the, yeah. The two-wheel drive, 250. Okay, so it is significantly less. That makes sense having a battery in the, ex or not a battery, but an extra motor with the extra drag. Here's something that I noticed on this. Come on over here, have a look-see. Now, when we had the Lexus, yes. what we noticed was that this was super flimsy. It's not as flimsy on this one. Granted, it's still not great, but the materials around here are the same as the one that's on the Lexus. This whole port thing, a lot of it, you know what it is? It's kind of like an afterthought, a little bit. Yeah, like they designed a car and then they decided to make it electric. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you do, I mean, you can't, hey, at least you can fast charge, right? Yeah. Um, so, but so, so there's me, a lot of negative that we're throwing let out me there tell, on the car. Let me tell you some other things, right? So All this right. has about a 65 kilowatt hour battery. Um, now it competes with obviously cars like the ID4, mm -hmm. uh, the um, Model Ma Y, right? The Model Mach E. Uh, what else is there? Model Y, yeah. right? 215 horsepower. Yeah, it's not a lot. No, it's not. No, not not for this class. Zero to sixty is what a little over six. Yeah, six point five seconds, which sounds fast, guys. But for an electric car, it's That's pretty actually darn slow. In its class, isn't it, it? It also has about half the storage room of a Rav Four in the back. Yeah, it doesn't have as much room. Part of that has to do with the shape back here. Now, the good news is that down here you have no spare tire but you have a charger uh, yeah you have a charger right <laughs> now that's typical for a lot of electric cars i mean we're nitpicking at that um but there is something i want to show you when we shut the trunk uh, there's there's two more gripes that i have all right let's see here and then and then i'm done with my gripes there's a lot of stuff i like about the car okay okay so first uh it's not really a gripe but it's more of something that i've perceived 
This must be for massive aerodynamics. Yeah, because there's no rear windshield wiper. Yes, that's the other part. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I really, especially living in snow country, I like having a rear wiper. I, some people have been like, well, it'll just slide right off when you turn on the, the, the rear defrost. No, uh, you know what? No, not a, not a foot of snow. No. When you're slowly backing up down a driveway and you have tons of snow powering down, it doesn't just slide right off. And, so and, having a wiper And I'll helps. leave you one last thought yeah. before we get in and drive it. Uh, why is the B small? <laughs> Why isn't that capital? Um, because Generation X does not like capitalization. I'm surprised it's not like a hashtag. <laughs> that would be better. Hashtag Z4X. See, I'm already making it cool. You're welcome, Toyota. <laughs> All right, let's drive it. Yeah, it's not going to work. All right, come on, let's drive it. All right, Nathan, let me um, show you the other thing that really drives me crazy in this car. Sure. But once again, they went and reinvented the shift knob, mm -hmm. which you have to nowadays because it's not going to be a new car without a different way to shift it, right? Right, right, right. right. So, yeah, you want to shift it left, right, try it. Can't do it. It's because it's a child safety knob. You have to push down, right? Yep, you have to push down and put it in reverse, would you? Okay, listen. Oh, what a melodious sound. Why? Blah, really? Blah, I, I feel like I'm driving blah, a caterpillar instead blah. of a car. But it's pretty, it's a pretty noise. Yeah, now if there was something behind me, you'd also get that like, you know, there's something behind you sound at the same time. Right, I, I, and then it would be a... A double chime. Right, it would be a small, uh, you know, a quartet basically. Okay, so what happens when you put it in drive? It goes away. And then you gotta, of course, log into your car. Uh, yeah, I know, that's a Toyota thing though in general <laughs> that, that they've had issues with. Now, while you're being extremely grumpy, I'm going to say a couple of things about this interior. I do not hate it. No, I, didn't, I like this. I, I'll give you that. Yeah, this material is pretty good. The door material is not too bad. The only issue I have, being an owner of a car that has a lot of black plastic, is this. I know that after a while, this is going to be filled with like dust and fingerprints, all this stuff here. Can I continue my grumpiness? I'm feeling especially grumpy. Okay, go, grow. Where is the uh, glove box? There's no glove box. Right, it's, it's, it's just space down here. <laughs> yeah, but there is a lot of space down there, but you know what the problem is, is that by putting this giant wide thing here, I like to spread. I like to be, <laughs> you, you man, know. Are you man spreading? Man spread, and I can't man spread here too much. <laughs> let, let me put that into less uh, offensive terms. I don't think it's an offense. Okay, go ahead. I, I, I can't put my knee. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. Hurts my knee. <laughs> yeah, that's... It's this is just it's it, it, for in terms of legroom it's fine but in terms of leg width it's not so fine. Where is the volume knob? There's That's the one big difference between this and the Solterra. Subaru put a little volume knob right yes, here. So you yes. So you put a volume whatever this is. Well, because when you're in your car and you've got your man bun and your gauge here, you know all your extra tats <laughs> and everything else, you need that little thing. But in this vehicle, you just slide it. All right, and then this is the thing that Toyota's been doing recently, right? They put the steering wheel kind of low, and then they move your... That's unusual. That's going to take time to get used to. Your dashboard cluster way in the front. And you know why they do that? Because they want a heads-up display without paying for it. No, they want to make you feel old because <laughs> their customers are older. And it's much harder as you get older to focus on the thing in front of you and then to focus on something right in front of you. So going from the car to the dashboard can be, let's say... Um, optically <laughs> treacherous for old people. Now wait, are you getting this from Toyota or is this something that you can No, no, up no, with? this this is true. This is ab this is absolutely true. I'm not making this up. Uh -huh. And so by moving the the display way forward, it allows people who are optically challenged to not have to focus uh, as much between the things in front of them and the dashboard or uh, the in this case the digital dash cluster. I will say this, I'm glad they didn't put it in the middle here. True that. I remember when that was a little bit of a thing for a while. Yeah. I, I really didn't like that. Um, and I think that it's sort of cutting the distance between having a regular setup, an IP, and then having a heads-up display. Yeah, but the, but the, the, I don't the understand. It blocks point. your view. Yes, it does, especially if you're small and old and you have osteo, <laughs> so you can't even see. If, over I, was, the if I was like this, I, I, then it, you, it, it would be blocking your view a little exactly. bit, right? It, well, you can do this. So. Well, yeah, that's but. But now it's in my lap. Well, there are certain people who drive like that. <laughs> It's just, it's just maybe, maybe it's just, you know, solving a problem that didn't need solving. Well, that tends to be the case with a lot of car companies doing that. Now, let's see how she uh, rips. I'll, I'll, I'll accelerate. I'll get rid of the beans. Here we go. Huh. Like I say, fast for uh, For a car. regular car, yeah, it's Six, really fast. 6.5-ish. That's not bad at all. That's not bad. You but know. for an electric car, it's definitely on the slower end. Yeah, yeah. Then, of course, you've got, you know... 
this HVAC control right here. Which, yeah, which no is real all, buttons. No buttons, yeah, once just, again. Just these. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do prefer the buttons that they have down here. And, and notice this button. <laughs> X mode. Yes, that's very well known. That's Toyota knows that very well. Oh, no, sorry. I was speaking of Subaru, right? Yeah. X mode is a Subaru. Thing. Wow, you are in a grumpy mood today. <laughs> sorry. But, but, you know, we could go boulder bashing now, yeah? Fire to that, put up the lockers. What is, oh. oh look at, yeah, look at this. Yeah, I got my there, phone man. right now. Yeah, and then my and, phone doesn't fit. And then you can't see it, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, and I don't even think it's charging because my case is kind of big. But we do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is nice. But, yeah, that comes standard in almost every machine built, well, except for GM, which is taking it away. In their electric well, cars. I want to. <laughs> That's now, a head scratcher. You know, GM actually make an interesting point. So uh, there's an elephant in the room about this car, Roman. What is that? Uh, discounts and whatnot. You're yeah, not, you're yeah. not uh, eligible for really anything. It's it made in Japan, I believe, and it doesn't qualify for the tax. Refund. Currently, seventy-five hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, currently. So you're not eligible for that. It may and, qualify for local, like statewide. Yeah, and and you, you guys check your local state ordinance, see what they they say. But look, it does drive well. Yes, it does. It's comfortable. Yes, it is. Uh, the seats, at least. Uh, you know, it is relatively uh well sorted i mean it is a toyota right so, yeah sure so I, I believe all of this will be just like it is today and 15 years from now watch uh, the dog i see the dog again. I'm, I'm not gonna because i'm so quiet maybe if i back up i'll scare him here i'll put it in reverse that'll that'll get his attention no 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 because it's oh, or is that just in here now you're <laughs> freaking the dog i was like what the hell are you doing <laughs> sorry <Yeah. laughs> don't mean to freak the dog out <laughs> i was just yeah, trying to warn even him the guy's like coming. what the hell are you doing my dog's right here what are you doing pal <laughs> Um, so I, I did like what you said earlier, your first gripe about how Toyota made a car for people who don't like electric cars. Yes. I think that that might be in the vein of what they're talking about, because even though it's got lots of gizmos and goodies, you can master driving this car in an hour. You know, even if you don't know much about cars, as long as you figure out the gear lever, which would probably take a half an hour for some people I know. Um, but, but, but. The rest of the vehicle has its own unique quirk of being kind of sensible and simple. So, if but you, it doesn't do anything special. If you can get past the name, right? Let's, let's, yeah, the name is dreadful. Let's just jump outside. So, if you can get past the name, yeah, which um, I'm sure people can. The problem, in a nutshell, is it's basically a previous generation. It's not quite a comp California compliance car. Yeah, but it's it's kind of almost in a way. Like a previous generation, the standard today, Nathan, has to be 300 miles, right? It's like real estate, right? Location, I'd say location. 250 miles is the opening standard on cheap ones. Yeah, like real estate, location, 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 EVs, range, range, range. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, the problem is that every other EV in this segment has more range. Yes. Has, has more range, has more power, has, has faster more space, charging, has faster charging. charging. In some cases, not all cases. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or is more competitive price-wise. Yeah, so the question, you know, that you're asking yourself is, will Toyota's quality trump that? And I think, or reputation for quality, I think the answer is yes for some people. But once again, to me, the bottom line, like you like to say, is they built an electric car <laughs> for you people said, who don't like electric you cars. You said that, actually. I, I, I will give you the credit on that. <laughs> and maybe that's a smart thing, because right now we're in a moment in time where the early adopters, or is it adapters? adopters have like bought all the electric cars they've ever wanted mm -hmm. and now we're moving into the general public and there's this kind of chasm right that you have to cross and maybe this is the answer maybe this is how you know like a gateway drug for non-electric car people i don't know well i'm gonna say this toyota has already has been very vocal about the point that they're not hip to going all electric but they still need to make some electric cars right in order to be within compliance right now this is not the best first effort for and, Toyota. And, and I'm sure they to, could do better. Toyota would say we'd be better off if we all bought hybrids. I would agree with them for the most part, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that what the mandates are and what they're supposed to be doing and what they're eventually going to be doing. They even said it straight out. They went right back to the drawing board and they're starting all over with their battery electric cars. This is their only offering right now. And they have teased an LFA uh, replacement that they're saying has like, you know, 900 miles of range. So maybe they're going to pull an EV rabbit out of their hat and surprise us all. Well, they've done some recent partnerships and whatnot that but, are out there. You can go to all TFL and see that too. But when it comes to the BZ4X, I'm grumpy. No kidding. See you guys next time. Ciao.